Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So this is a how-to video on how to wire up a power inverter direct to your car battery. Turns out we had to do that because even with the new 500 watt inverter, the cigarette lighter plug adapter they give you, it has its own fuse, but so does the inverter. But um, they do say with the, the plug, no more than a 100 watt draw, which we set off the alarm on that thing today. So it was kind of like, hmm, okay, I guess they're right. So anyways, I decided to hardwire it, and I had a cable that had a uh, cigarette lighter adapter on the other end. So I wired it direct to the battery, plugged it in, still same thing, 100 watts only. So it's definitely linked to that cable. Now the only other cable they give you is alligator clips to go direct to the battery, but who wants to have a friggin' inverter hanging out the nose of their car? It's just ridiculous. So anyway, I cut the head off of that long cable I had. And uh, as you can see, we got positive to positive, negative to negative. And I have an inline fuse that I'd put in this thing originally that's 10 amp. And I can change it out whenever I want because I use spade bits uh, or spade adapters. Anyway, so it goes through the fender here. So you're going to need a coat hanger. And it actually comes out through the driver's side. My wife's in here. She's on her laptop. And I got mine going because we're going to show you. Uh, but anyways, I've got everything Gorilla taped. I love Gorilla tape. It sticks forever. Mm -hmm. So I've got it taped in here along the side, in here. Now, none of this door actually touches this. So that's actually a good safety net is to bring it down through here. Snakes into this panel down below. In and around the panel. Underneath all the trim. There's my back AC. And, of course, there's a spot where I didn't get it tucked in quite that much, but it's okay there. Because nobody sticks their feet there anyway. So, we'll go into the back seat now. And it comes out and stays underneath these panels. And then I've got it going... Try and do this with my phone. i got it coming out and under the seat here. So, it's actually under the seat. I got wires snaked here. I got to tuck them in a little bit better. And then through here, the wire comes out. Now I had to extend my wire, so I had some uh, wire from an old lamp. And uh, it's a little heavier gauge, but it doesn't make any difference anyhow. Uh, more than heavy enough wire, because uh, it's only feeding 12 volt line in. But you do need something with some gauge to it, right? But uh, anyways, as you can see, we now have. Um, See if I can do this, go, get my fingers in the way. Um, all the lights are now lit in blue. And of course, green indicator saying there's power going into the system. That green light will be lit even when the power's off. So if I turn the power off here, press and hold. So now there's nothing getting to the computers. We're no longer charging. And... Uh, so it's kind of like you're on your own until your batteries run out. Now she's also got her cell phone uh, plugged into her laptop at the same time. So she's charging her cell phone off of her laptop. So it actually helps put a constant load on the battery and on the charger to keep things charged up and whatnot. And uh, my cell phone, of course, is in my hand and it's not plugged into my computer because I'm trying to shoot my video with this. <laughs> but anyway, so we push the hold the button. It fires up. Now before all we got was this 100 watt section lit, everything else was out. And that's because of the cigarette lighter adapter, okay? So when you're running full out power direct in from your battery, um, you're going to get the 500 watt usable. Now this thing also can surge at 1000 watts, uh, which is quite amazing. So uh, I don't think we'll ever have to worry about that. But I guarantee you that two laptops... Um, on just the cigarette lighter adapter is not going to go well for you. You're going to set off the alarm on the thing. So you, you can only run one laptop and charge your phone either off the USB port on the machine or because there is a port there for charging. And it puts out two point something amps anyways. And the main 120 volt line, you've got 4.4 amps usable. So we have an extension cord on each uh, plug. So we each independently have our own. So basically we're splitting that power uh, so that we're allowed 2.2 uh, amps each. Our power supplies for our laptops only use 1.5. So we're only drawing a total of 3 amps out of the 4.4. So we could still plug more stuff in if we wanted to. 
and use it up. And as we use up power, these lights will tell you the remaining uh, amperage left available or wattage left available to you as you use it up. So we've got one power cord here, one over here, which runs my power supply for my laptop. Now, the one thing I didn't like about this um, inverter was the three prong sockets absolutely sucked for trying to put our, our laptop power supplies into um, because it's very loose fitting. So with a three prong plug or a proper two prong plug that has the little uh, uh, wide blade on it, they'll go in firm and be fine. But I wanted grounded plugs even though our power supplies aren't grounded. I got, you know, heavy duty cable in here. So this is like, you know, weatherproof cable. And so even in the winter, it's fine. I can just leave the stuff in here and it'll be just dandy. Um, the car gets hot enough. It'll definitely warm up the inverter. So no problems there. Um, and for now, I've duct taped the inverter down to um, the hump here. And I don't know if I'm going to need to actually go any further with it. Um, it's not like I have kids at home anymore, so nobody really goes in the back seat other than our groceries. <laughs> so we'll just have to be mindful of, you know, grocery day around the inverter. But, you know, otherwise we can just leave it just where it is. Um, if I had the motivation, I would probably just mount this in the trunk because all our trunk can actually hold is a couple of bottles of washer fluid and a little tote box we have in there, and that's it. So... Um, I don't know if I do decide to I might but I, I kind of like it where it is anyways because this way it gets the most heat um, From the heating system anyways in the winter um, You know because we do have heat that comes off the floor or cool air off the floor So no big deal there But anyways as you can see when you are 12 volt direct and my engine is not running uh, in the car um, We are getting all the lights lit. We have full power. We're both at the same time now. No alarms are going off it's all good. So my advice is if you get any power inverter that is above 300 watts and you need to draw two computers, we'll say in this case, um, as long as you have enough amperage output from your sockets on your inverter that will feed the power supplies, then you're golden. But you got to go off of the battery direct. And like I said, our power supplies on our laptops... This is probably upside down. I don't know how well you're going to see that. But you can see uh, the output here, or input. It wants 100 to 240 volt at 1.5 amps. Okay, so that's the amperage it draws on the 120 volt side. 1.5 amps. And this is times two computers. So that's three amps right there. So you need at least... Uh, three amps to just make the grade but try and find something with a little bit of extra amperage just for a little bit of you know space there you know I would anyways but um, that's just me but uh, so in the end I would have to say in my final thoughts on this inverter um, well you know what we're gonna wait I, I'm gonna give it a couple of weeks of running the daylights out of this thing and um, then I'll do a final review of what I really, in total, think about this thing, um, you know. And uh, after we've used it for quite a while, this is only our, what, third shot with this thing since we got it. So give me a, give me a couple of weeks of playing with this thing and see how well it's doing and whatnot. Um, when we do use it up at the church to do our uploading uh, via our cell phones, because uh, that's where our, we get the strongest internet signal for LTE. We don't have the engine running in the car. So it should be interesting to see, even with just this green LED always staying on, if it actually does affect my uh, car battery at all. But I highly doubt it. It's just an LED bulb, and that draws like nothing. You know, so that shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. So, anyways, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the how-to video. Um, I would have done this as a full install step-by-step, step, but that would take too darn long. So just showing you an idea on how to route things. Um, I, th I thought that was a lot better way to go so you get an idea. You will need a coat hanger, by the way, or some kind of uh, stiff wire to hook your 
um, cable on to feed it through your fender because that's going to be kind of like a must. Um, and some tape, of course, to tape the wire to the hanger or bend the hanger over and loop it, whatever you need to do there um, to, to get it fed through the fender side. And then scooter down and you should be fine to go. But um, anyways, thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.